What the hell? This is the 355. Yes, 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 yes. So just to give a little bit of a background, Zvox as a company, I've been using them for at least about a dozen of years. It started with a sound base, which I still use to this day, which its main selling point is the clarity of the dialogue. And from year to year, Zvox have been improving the clarity, quality of the sound bar. And no, Zvox is not selling the surround sound or Dolby Atmos prowess. Before I continue on, kindly click like, share and subscribe to my channel as it helps a lot with my YouTube algorithm. After all, it costs you absolutely nothing, yet it will help me with my channel growth. And if you can start a discussion in the comments down below, that would be greatly appreciated too. Moving on, I use my oversized box cutter to open the Zvox box. And as soon as I open it up, I'm being welcomed by the instruction manual. And unlike the regular instructions manual, this manual is very easy to read as it comes fully illustrated and printed in huge letters. If you only read one manual all your life, I highly recommend you to read this manual. Going further, after taking out the soundbar, I see the supplied optical cable, the remote control, and as you can see here, the remote is sparse with big buttons, very easy to read, very easy to operate, so there's no second guessing which button does what. What a concept. All remotes are supposed to be this easy to use. Now we move on and open the mysterious brown box, which inside includes a couple of AAA battery for the remote, stereo 3.5mm to RCA stereo cable, and the power supply. Now let's have a look at the soundbar itself. I specifically record it at this angle so you can see the speaker driver and the multi-segment LED display behind the grill. The body is made of sturdy plastic with metal grill all across. The soundbar itself is very light, but it does not feel cheap, which is a good thing in my book. In the back, there are four slots. From the left is the power input, the Toslink input, 3.5mm stereo input, and 3.5mm output that can be used as a headphone jack or an output for your subwoofer. And here it is, the Zvox 355, sitting on top of Sonos Beam Gen 2, sitting on top of a Zvox sound base that I've been using for almost a dozen of years. Here you can also take a peek of the three drivers facing forward, sitting inside the enclosure of Zvox 355, where the driver in the middle is used for dialogue enhancement and the left and right speakers for, you know, the left and right channels. Installation of the soundbar is a breeze. Because there's no button whatsoever on the soundbar itself, you need to start the installation by installing the supplied AAA battery into the remote. You definitely don't want to lose this remote because without this remote, this entire soundbar is a wash. Can't be used, not even powering it on. Next, I plug in the power using the supplied power supply on the left there, and right next to it is the optical cable from the TV. When that is done, turn on your TV, go to your settings in your TV, and go to audio. Press enter, go to audio output, and then choose optical. And you're done. That's it. That's the entire installation process. From that point forward, you can just exit from your settings menu and watch whatever you want. And to do the review, I don't only watch movies, but I also watch my own YouTube videos. The reason behind it is just for me to check the vocal neutrality or dialogue neutrality in producing voice and vocal clarity. And after having it tested for a couple of weeks, I come up with the following recommended settings for you. First, turn on the soundbar, and obviously you can play with the volume up and down whichever way you want it. 
and the volume level will be shown in numbers on the amber LED display. When you press mute, the number 00 will come out blinking. From there, press the surround button on the remote and use SD2. Not 1, not 3, but SD2. At that particular setting, the soundbar will give you a wide enough stereo imaging, but not excessively so to the point of sounding artificial. When done, press the AccuVoice button and make sure it's under AC2. This will boost the voice just a little bit without making it sounding over exaggerated. With some movies, sometimes you have to bring it up to AC4, but beyond that, the dialogue is just too much. From there, press other settings on the remote and you will see low, that's the bass control, which the recommended value is one or two. And high is the tribal control, which my recommended value will be one or two as well. Of course, your miles may vary depending on the acoustics of your room, how far you're sitting from the screen, your hearing acuity, and so on and so forth. But you can use my recommended settings as at least a starting point for your system. So how's the verdict? Well, if you're looking for something that can replace your home theater setup, this is not it. If you're looking for something that's audiophile, this is also not it. This soundbar is designed mostly to replace the built-in TV speakers and also to enhance dialogue intelligibility for people who require some help in the hearing department. And for the intended purpose, the Zvox 355 works really well. And especially at their very low asking price. So we have now reached the end of my video and I hope this video can help you in some way, shape or form. Please do me a favor by clicking like, share and subscribe to my channel and also put some comments down below to help my YouTube algorithm. It costs you nothing, but it really means a lot to me. And with that, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.